Until about 20,000 years ago, our Earth resembled an icy desert where life was a real challenge. We know this stage in the history of our planet as the Ice Age. And although we think that the Ice Age is in the past, we are actually rapidly moving towards it right now. In less than 100,000 years, the Earth will once again turn into a lifeless ice flow. The reason for this is the Milankovitch cycle, which gradually changes the Earth's orbital position. The endless flow of these cycles dramatically changes the planet's climate for thousands of years. Get ready. Today, you'll learn how the Ice Age begins, why it is important for life on the planet, and how people delay its onset. The impact of the Earth's orbital features on its climate change was first studied in detail by Serbian geophysicist and mathematician Malutin Milankovic. Studying the works of the climatologist of the time, the young mathematician drew attention to a rather mysterious stage in the history of Earth, the Ice Age. It was already known that the planet's tilt angle and orbital elongation affected the temperature of the globe, but none of the theories described at the time could explain the periods of global winters. In 1911, Milankovitch began his landmark work on a diagram of the glaciers of the Pleistocene Epoch, which ended about 11,500 years ago. During this period, the continents were covered in ice and only for short periods of time did the global climate become temperate. In addition to mathematical analysis, Milankovitch also made geological observations, studying ice cores, fossils, and sediments from the ocean floor to compare the ratio of oxygen to hydrogen to determine the type of climate at the time. After years of hard theoretical work, the mathematician concluded that the Earth's orbit had changed in three cycles of varying lengths over 650,000 years. During the initial skepticism, geologists later confirmed his theory, sparking interest in his work after his death. The amount of sunlight that reaches the upper atmosphere is determined by three astrophysical features of the planet. The inclination of the axis, the shape of the orbit, or the eccentricity of the precision of the axis. They are the basis for Milankovitch's cycles, but first things first. Axis inclination is the angle of rotation of the axis as the planet moves around the sun. It is responsible for the change of seasons on Earth. Currently, the angle of inclination relative to the sun is 23.5 degrees, but millions of years ago it ranged from 22.1 to 24.5 degrees, which is actually one of the main factors in the global climate. The greater the angle of inclination of the axis, the more each hemisphere receives solar radiation in summer and less in winter. Consequently, the less the axis is tilted, the cooler the summers, the warmer the winters, and the greater the ice cover. The axis tilt fluctuates every 40,000 years and we're currently in the middle of this cycle. According to NASA, the tilt is expected to decrease in about 9,800 years. Milankovitch considered the tilt to be the most important factor in the ice ages, so the entire duration of the Milankovitch cycle likely depends on it. The next factor in climate change is eccentricity, the deviation of an orbit from a perfect circle. The Earth's orbit is not perfectly round. Under the influence of gravitational pull between planets and stars, the orbits of the planets are stretched into an elliptical shape. That is, the Earth does not always receive the same solar heating for all hemispheres. Thus, in an elliptical orbit, the distance between the planet and the star varies depending on the path of the planet. Therefore, at the point closest to the Sun, the perihelion, the Earth moves faster and receives more solar energy, and at the farthest point, the aphelion, it moves slowly with less heat. But so far, this has not had a very significant impact on our climate given the very small eccentricity. But in about 100,000 years, according to the theory of cycles, the shape of the orbit will become more elliptical, 
Consequently, the Earth will receive 23% more sunlight at perihelion and much less at aphelion, which will lead to very hot summers and frosty winters. The last orbital feature is the wobble of the Earth on its axis as it rotates, or precession. This wobble is caused by the gravitational interaction with the Moon and the Sun, which gradually changes the direction of the axis, kind of like a spinning top as it slows down. One cycle of axial precession is just under 26,000 years. So if that axis is now pointing north, and we see the North Star, then in thousands of years, people will see another star in its place, such as Cohab and other constellations in general. The precession cycle also makes conditions in one hemisphere more extreme than in the other. In 13,000 years, according to NASA estimates, the northern hemisphere will experience much stronger solar radiation, while the southern hemisphere will experience moderate seasonal fluctuations. In addition to the axis of the planet itself, the orbit can also fluctuate due to the interaction with Jupiter and Saturn. As a result, the perihelion is gradually moving away. Its rotation cycle takes 112,000 years. Apsidal and axial precession can actually be considered one process, and therefore they both play a significant role in determining climate fluctuations and the timing of ice ages. Thus, the amount of solar radiation and energy that the Earth receives from the Sun directly depends on the cyclicity of the three orbital features of our planet. However, it is worth noting that Milankovitch cycles describe long-term changes of tens of thousands of years, but they cannot explain the climate changes of the last hundreds of years and the present. With a certain tilt, eccentricity and precession cycle, the Earth's climate can expect serious and irreversible long-term changes. Thus, according to Milankovitch, the Earth may face a new ice age in 41,000 years. The ice age is also cyclical. Although we cannot feel the direct impact of the Milankovitch cycles, they have a very slow and gradual effect on the Earth's climate. So they have an extremely low impact on the temperature now. So after long-term changes, when the eccentricity increases, the angle of inclination becomes smaller and the perihelion moves away from the sun. Planet's surface gradually receives less and less light and energy from the star, and the Earth faces a strong cooling. Over time, the amount of ice will increase in the polar regions. The increased concentration of ice will act as a reflector for the sunlight that reaches the surface so global temperatures will begin to drop even further. In combination with other factors, such as a decrease in the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, or fluctuations in ocean currents caused by changes in salinity and the position of the continents, an ice age begins, which can last for tens of millions of years. During this time, the Earth may change dramatically Persistent cold winters will significantly affect water levels in the oceans and precipitation in general, which would pose a significant threat to many non-adapted species, including humans. The impact on global infrastructure and the economy would also be significant. Low temperatures can destroy power lines and roads, which would not only disrupt global trade, but also force people to seek safe havens, triggering massive migrations. After one cycle is over, the next begins, which is already leading to warming and the slow end of the ice age. The ice melting away, changing the Earth's landscape, the water level in the oceans is beginning to rise, and temperatures are returning to more moderate levels. We are currently in the middle of an interglacial period. The last glaciation occurred tens of thousands of years ago. So every 41,000 years, the Earth goes through an ice age, but that has changed in the last century. Now humanity has at least 100,000 years to prepare for the global cooling, but that's not really good news. As we know, Milankovitch cycles do not have a strong influence on the current climate. They can't be blamed for the current warming. Over the past 150 years, the orbital cycles have not greatly changed the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth's surface. But on the contrary, 
the level of solar radiation has even fallen over the past 50 years. In particular, not only the lower layers of the atmosphere, but also the upper layers, like the stratosphere, should have been heated by the sun's energy, but instead it's been cooled. In addition to cycles, warming has many other factors. The main one being the emission of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which delays the release of heat outside of the atmosphere. Since 1970, global annual emissions have increased by nearly 90%, raising the Earth's overall temperature by 34 degrees Fahrenheit. In 2022, global CO2 emissions reached a new record of nearly 37 GT due to human activity. As early as 2030, temperatures could rise by another degree. Given that the Earth is in an interglacial period, it should be cooling down by now according to Milankovitch cycles, but instead, however, the Ice Age cycle is only increasing. Despite the delay in the Ice Age, it still has a serious impact on the entire planet, including its life as a result of cycles. Any changes in the climate and environment always affect the evolution of biological species due to the need to readapt to survive. Glacial interglacial cycles create different conditions for life in general, forcing species to first change to low temperatures and then move to a more favorable one. For example, in northeastern Australia during the last glaciation, the composition of forests completely changed from tropical to dry sclerophyllous forests dominated by eucalyptus. Thus, these forests were able to adapt to frequent periods of dryness on the continent. In general, all regions close to ice sheets and glaciers have experienced some changes in vegetation. Some species of shrubs and trees in southwestern America grew at lower altitudes than now, and deciduous trees appeared in the eastern U.S., which were not present 18,000 years ago. Another reason for the evolution of many species was the forced migration of various animals and insects. Difficult conditions in the northern regions forced many species of beetles to change their habitat from North America and South Britain, some of which can now be found in Africa and India. However, many other beetle species of the same time became extinct due to difficulties in adaption and the pressure of natural selection. On the other hand, the migration of a single species to different regions can cause diversification. One well-known example is the Galapagos, or Darwin's finches, birds of the same species whose beaks have different shape due to the diet in different places of migration. Milankovitch cycles operate on time scales much longer than the life of a single organism, but shorter than the lifespan of an entire species. This has a very serious implication for the accumulation of evolutionary changes and survival in general. As the climate is changing, biological species need to adapt to it, but one individual cannot live through the entire Milankovitch cycle to pass on the skills they've acquired to the next generation. Therefore, thousands of subsequent generations will live in different conditions, gaining new survival mechanisms that can be combined in future generations. Thus, Milankovitch cycles contribute to greater species adaption to future changes. Similarly, orbital cycles affect human evolution. Climate change plays a significant role in natural selection, which ensures that only the most adapted species survive and develop. Thus, according to the reverse pulse hypothesis proposed by Elizabeth Verba, it was the transition from warm, humid conditions to cold, dry ones that led to the origin of the Homo genus, to which we belong. In particular, according to a study of the African coast by paleontologist Peter de Monocle, orbital fluctuations coincided with other important stages of human evolution, such as the diversification of the Homo species and the expansion of the range of Homo erectus. That is, the Milankovitch cycle could have been one of the driving forces behind the birth of the entire human race. However, these ideas are still in the active field of scientific research, but of course, climate change could have had a certain impact on the evolution of human ancestors, as it had on many representatives of flora and fauna. That is why the Milankovitch cycles are of great interest for studying the past of our planet and what the future may hold. Scientists continue to investigate the implications of these cycles 
reconstructing a complete picture of Earth's evolution. In 2013, a team of Chinese scientists with lead author Hua Chun Wu found new evidence for Milankovitch cycles in the Mishan and Shanghai areas of South China, which are late Permian sedimentary environments. The Permian period began 298 million years ago and ended 252 million years ago, which shows how long the orbital cycles have a history. By comparing the cyclicity of magnetic data to accurately date the cycles, paleontologists found evidence of 405,000 year cycles in both areas, allowing them to trace the orbital cycle of the entire Paleozoic era. What's more, they found that the 34,000 year tilt cycle could have been influenced by Mars. In particular, the Milankovitch cycles are important for studying not only the geological evolution of the Earth, but also other objects in the solar system. In 2022, a group of researchers led by Margaret L. Lantink was able to reconstruct the frequency of the Earth's precession to understand the history of the Earth-Moon system. Thanks to the cycles that were recorded in the 2.46 billion year old Joffrey Falls sediments, they were able to get a rough idea of the moon's distance from the Earth. The research team still needs data from the pre-Cambrian period to accurately establish the history of the Earth's satellite evolution, but the data obtained has expanded the already known knowledge of the moon's trajectory. Further modeling will be able to more accurately build the path of the satellite's movement in the past, and in particular, into the future. The Milankovitch cycles play a very important role in the Earth's climate pattern and the evolution of many biological organisms. An ice age caused by the cycles of tilt, eccentricity, and the precession is inevitable for our planet. In almost 100,000 years, the northern hemisphere of the Earth or even the entire planet may be covered with a layer of ice again, and humans will have to adapt to the new conditions and evolve along with the Earth. But while humanity still has a long way to go, modeling the impact of the Milankovitch cycles on long-term climate variability is crucial to understanding future climate fluctuations, which can help humanity survive in the future.